Many of you have heard of the Brownsville Revival. Can you imagine four and a half million people from all over the world came to Pensacola, Florida, and um, we had uh, half a million. We kept track of uh, converts. Crime in the city went down 18%. Now, it was a phenomenal event. It was an inbreaking of God, a visitation of God. I had the privilege to be a part of that. I'd be there each week for the five years. But you know what? John Kilpatrick, who was the key leader in that wonderful revival, would stress something. And you know what? When I went to South Africa, I had the honor to be ministering with Derek Prince. And when he ministered there, you know what? He would stress something. Do you know what that is? What can be a real key to a move of God for your church? Well, let's stop and let's look. In the Bible, it tells us when, you know, we look at Jesus and warning us about the last days prior to his return, he said that there is going to be lawlessness increasing and the love of many will grow cold. He also warned about persecution and, you know what else? He, war he warned us about betrayal in the family and in relationships. And when John Kilpatrick spoke at that revival and really was overseeing it, guess what? He would warn about rejection and betrayal. He would also say it's essential that we maintain unity. Well, Derek Prince did the same thing. He said that rejection and betrayal were central. And he said, you know, it's going to happen. It's in the Bible. You'll see it. It's a root, he said, of feminism, of lesbianism. People are rejected. They feel betrayed. They have a root of bitterness. Well, we need to be careful. And um, right now, we're facing a situation. It was really a bombshell when a number of weeks ago, there was a report out of Kansas City, the International House of Prayer, Kansas City, where Mike Bickle was being called on the carpet. And you say, well, wait, wait, I think I heard about it. What was that about? Well, there were accusations that were being brought that there was some untoward behavior on Mike's part and that there would need to be an investigation in a redemptive and a biblical way to find, was there any wrongdoing? And if there was, it would have to be addressed scripturally. Now, I say that at the outset. It's critical that we approach this scripturally. But at the same time, we need to be redemptive in our heart. So I wanted to take this week in review and focus in on this so you know how we're to respond. And also, you have an update on, on really what is, is going on right now. Uh, you know, when I had a, a time to talk once with Billy Graham, it was a divine appointment in the lobby, he said to me this. He said, stay in the book. He pointed to his Bible. Stay in the book. And that's what we want to do. Because why? Well, in situations like this, it's very easy to get off. And the enemy, who is the accuser of the brethren, who, you know, Jesus said, smite the shepherd and the sheep will scatter. He will try to exploit situations like this. And we've got to be very discerning and very careful. Now, I don't know if you remember the TV show Twilight Zone. Well, on there, there was an episode once where these alien beings came and they took on the bodies of human beings, citizens. And what they did is they brought about a campaign of personal and uh, collective destruction by sowing evil reports scandalous reports and slander, and they whispered things. People began to believe them, and all of a sudden, the whole town was in an uproar, and there was division, and the, the, the aliens were on a hillside gleefully laughing at what they had caused. Do you know that in the classic book, Dante's Inferno, there's levels of hell that he talked about? You might say, what was at the very bottom, the worst? You know what it was? It was, it was reserved for those who engage in treachery and betrayal. Paul faced it. Jesus faced it. I have faced it. Maybe you have. You find out who your friends are when you go through something like this. So what Mike is fa facing right now is really the importance of accountability. Let's take a look at this, discern what's right, what's wrong, and then we want to glorify God in the process. Now, are you familiar with the term evil report? Let me give you a definition because, you, and let me ask you this, what causes uh, separation of close friendships and a root of bitterness to spring up that will defile a whole church and a ministry? Uh, what causes division in organizations, in families, churches, ministries? You know what it is? The answer is simply an evil report. Now you say, Larry, what is an evil report? Well, I'm going to read a definition from Mr. Bill Gothard. And if you read in the Old Testament, you may recall there was a son 
uh, Absalom. And he went on the edge of town and he would listen to people's evil reports. And it was something that he would use against his father, David. It's devastating. It's destructive. It's very dangerous. But what is an evil report? Let me read this to you. An evil report is the following. An evil report involves distortion or incomplete facts or false information. It is given with wrong motivation and causes hearers to come to inaccurate conclusions and respond with un look at this unscriptural solutions. We all have flaws. Let's be honest about this. You know, I've read the autobiography of Billy Graham, my hero, and also a biography from years ago. And you know, Billy Graham shares very humbly in there his flaws. He talks about how he went to the White House and in the ignorance, after he talked with President Truman, guess what? He came out, reporters asked him questions, and he spilled the beans on all of it. Truman was deeply offended and didn't want to talk to Billy after that. Do you know, Billy was in England and foolishly, he would say he was in a uh, pub. They're very popular there in England. I've been there many times. And he was sitting there with a journalist and he was sipping, I don't know if it was a, a root beer or, or, you know, ginger ale, but it was caught on camera. And well, man, Billy was in the bars and that was a way to try to ruin his reputation. Somebody wrote an article and said he was seen late at night walking down the street with someone called Beverly. The intimation was what? That it was a woman. It was George Beverly Shea, his songwriter. Billy had flaws he spoke about. He said if he could do his ministry all over again, he would spend more time with his family. Why? Well, he traveled. And you know what he said? He said, you know, his wife was interviewed once and they said, you know, Ruth, did you ever, with your relationship with Billy, ever think about divorce? She said, divorce? No, but murder? You know, she laughed about it. But they had issues. Franklin Graham, the mighty leader now, he, Ruth had to throw firecrackers under the door to get him out of bed. He struggled with some drugs. He was in rebellion. He wrote a book called Rebel With A Cause now. So Billy had his flaws. Now picture if Billy was uh, under cancel culture today and they would magnify these things to ruin his ministry and his reputation. So we've got to be very careful and, and really very discerning in these moments. Now I want to say right up front that um, Mike Bickle is a longtime friend. I've known Mike for over 40 years. I speak of his character. Now there is a uh, preliminary report. You can go to the Kansas City, the International House of Prayer, Kansas City, right there online, and you can read a preliminary report. There's a number of things that have come out where some of the, the women that brought reports, you know, they've peeled off, and you'll see that they're finding some things that are very encouraging in terms of our dear brother. I encourage you to go there to stay current. But there are others that are gleeful right now. They're saying, oh yeah, these Kansas City people, these crazy charismatics, good. And really, it's dangerous when you see people that will do things like this. Do you know the Bible says in 1 Timothy 5, don't ever bring an accusation against an elder unless it's on the grounds of two or three. And the Bible says in Proverbs 6, it says there's six things God hates, seven are an abomination to him. And you know what it talks about? Somebody that is a lying witness and somebody that sows discord among the brethren. The Bible tells us in Proverbs, it says, the first to present his case seems right until the other comes and examines him. That's called due process. Our whole legal system is based upon that. Now, I've been to England, and in England, it's the reverse. They will say you are guilty until proven innocent. Well, we need to take a step back and be very careful. Some leader said, you know, when I heard that comment about yeah, Mike Mickle, you know, he's a, he's a wolf in sheep's clothing. I thought that's disgraceful and that's grievous to Almighty God. I want to say up front that I know Mike Bickle. And I reiterate, I'm praying for he and his wife and his family and the wonderful church community there. But I know Mike. Do you know when Mike was transitioning from the Kansas City Church, he needed a leader to take that role. Well, he contacted me and asked me if I would come there. And I did. I visited. I spent time there. But I prayed it through, and I finally felt it wasn't the will of God. You know how Mike handled it? Graciously. And he was so kind. He said, great, Larry. I, I stand with you in your decision. I found Mike to be authentic. He lives in a modest house. Um, around Mike, he's very affirming. He's the real deal. 
And that doesn't mean he doesn't have flaws, but we've got to be very careful. When he ministered in a church we were planting, you know, it was beautiful. I watched, we were renting a facility, ever go through this one? And after everything was done, people left. But here's our guest speaker, and he's loading the equipment onto the truck. And then how about this? He ministered a number of times. He was a featured speaker in our church in Atlanta. And after the, the weekend, he heard that my young son, 20 years old, wanted to get engaged, but he was short finances. Mike took his entire honorarium, everything, and he just simply gave it to my son. My wife in the very room that I'm in right now, which is a studio, there's a beautiful picture, a portrait of the heavenly realm. Guess where that came from? Well, years ago, Mike passed it on to me from Kansas City, and he said, give it to your wife. That'll be an inspiration. I have found Mike to be a man of God, and he's one of my heroes. You think about it, the impact this man has had in the world, not just in Kansas City. So I'm saying to us right now, pray for Mike, the family, the leaders. Believe the best. Catch anybody. If they start succumbing and saying anything that would be, you know, an evil report, gossip, slander, please stop them. I was in a room once where somebody, it wasn't Mike, but somebody referred to a leader and said, oh yeah, that guy's a sexual predator. And I had to caution him. I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. And I checked it out. I called that leader. I got all the information. I talked to an attorney. Well, I got back to that fellow. I said, please, we've got to guard the reputation of one another. The devil is the accuser. He wants to divide and conquer. And this is our time to simply show that we trust God. He'll work in the situation. And I, for one, I believe in Mike, and I trust he's going to come through this, and I believe he will, victorious and stronger than ever, to finish well. I love Mike Bickle, and let's stand together in this hour for the will of God and the Holy Spirit of God. Hey friends, if you felt this video was helpful, make sure you like and subscribe so you get notified once new videos become available. Thanks.